Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now... With over 200 episodes made, originally airing on NBC Radio Network from 1944 to 1950, we bring to you Boston Blackie. through a heart. And now, back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Whew. Well, Blackie, I'm certainly glad we got out of that sideshow tent. Inspector Faraday will be here any minute. Getting out won't help much, Mary, if Inspector Faraday finds out that we were in there. Well, suppose we find out who killed the sword swallower before the inspector gets here. We're not going to try to solve this case, but I am. Uh Uh-oh. Here's where I get left. Left? Right. Mm. You stay here, Mary. I'll be back in a few minutes. Where are you going? I don't know exactly. I think I'll start with the owner of the carnival. He can probably tell me everything I want to know. I wonder where I can find him. A sign on that wagon over there says office. Say, that is a clue at that. I don't know how I get along without you. Sure try awful hard. I just have a hunch I better talk to the owner alone. See you in just a minute. All right, I'll be over by the Tunnel of Love when you get through. Is that a hint? I'm subtle, don't you think? (laughs) Then you buy the ticket, subtle. Now, look here, you. Don't stand there staring at me. Now, you listen to me. One more. Now, we'll talk about it later. Come in. Well, what do you want? I'm Boston Blackie. I'd like to see the owner of this car. I'm not hiring anybody today. Oh, you are the boss, then? Yeah, name is Jackson. I said I wasn't hiring anybody today. From what I heard while I was outside the door, I'd say you were firing somebody today. <laughs> what do you mean? There was a lovely little argument going on in here. Argument? Oh, you must have heard wrong. I was just talking to Mabel here. Uh, you call this, uh... Mabel? You're at a carnival, mister. Don't be surprised at anything. Mabel's our bearded lady. Well, I never expected to meet one whisker to whisker. (laughs) Glad to know you, Mabel. Uh, Mabel can't answer you. She's a mute. A bearded lady and a mute, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Well, that's something. You say your name's Blackie? What do you want? To talk to you about the murder of your sword swallower. Hey, I don't know a thing about that murder, Blackie. I'm waiting for the police now. Maybe I can help you before they get here. Oh, how? I think I'd better talk to you alone. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, okay, Mabel, you better get back to the sideshow. I'll talk to you later. Now, look, Blackie, all I know about that murder is what I heard. 
Uh, hey, watch where you're going, will you, bud? Oh, excuse me, lady. Well, Inspector Faraday, at last you've found your element, a carnival. Be careful, or they'll never let you out. So help me, Blackie, I might have known you'd be here. Then why did you bother to come down? You know I'll solve this murder for you. Quiet, Blackie. I want to know the owner of this carnival. Where do I find him? You're looking at him, Faraday. Allow me to introduce Mr. Jackson, Inspector Faraday. How do you do? How do you do? You own this show, Jackson? Oh, yes, I do. Faraday, is that what you call routine question number one? Quiet, Blackie. Jackson, what do you know about Lillian, the sword swallower? Who killed her? What a question, Faraday. If murders could be solved as easily as all that, you wouldn't have a job, which wouldn't be bad for the community. That's enough, Blackie. Look, Jackson, what do you know about your sword swallower? Lillian? Yeah. Well, she's been with my carnival for about three years. Good performer, well-liked, no enemies at all. Any love interest or anything? Well, yes, in a way. Bob Hendricks, my chief electrician, was in love with her. But she didn't love back, is that it? Mm, yes, that's just about it. Well, I think I ought to talk to him. What's his name again? Bob Hendricks. I don't know my business, Ev Lanky. I'll bet you anything that when I get this guy Hendricks, I get my killer. You're that sure? Huh? Why, this thing figures easy. A gal has no enemies, but she doesn't love a guy who loves her. He pleads with her to marry him. She says no. He keeps on begging. She keeps on saying no. He won't leave her alone. She wants to get rid of him. So she starts going out with another guy. Faraday, you're one. Ah, it's simple. He gets jealous. Thinks he's going to lose her to the other guy. And so that nobody can have her if he can't. The stoop kills her. Applause, applause. So I'm grabbing Bob Hendricks for the murder of that girl. Mary, is this what you call waiting by the tunnel of love? And what's the matter with you, Miss Wesley? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. I've just seen good ghost material, Inspector Faraday. A dead body. Ah, that's old stuff, Miss Wesley. That's why I'm here, to solve the murder of Lillian the Sword Swallower. And I have her killer, Bob Hendricks. Oh, no, you haven't, Inspector. Because the body I just saw, everybody says, belonged to Bob Hendricks. <laughs> Oh, maybe I should have bought tickets for the roller coaster. You are certainly not treating this like a tunnel of love. We're not here for romance, Mary. We're here to do some quiet thinking about murder. I see. And I guess there isn't anything romantic about murder, is there? Romantic? Say, you may have something there. I have something here, too. You in the tunnel of love. And so what? So, there may be a romantic angle to the deaths of Lillian and Bob Hendricks. Of course. Hendricks was in love with Lillian, the sword swallower. That's simple. She didn't love him, so he killed her. And that's that. That's that, sure. But we have to name a killer for Bob Hendricks. What's that? A problem. Got any suggested solution lying around loose? I'm not even close to one. I wonder, could Mabel fit into this? Mabel? The bearded lady? Blackie, you think she killed Hendricks? Maybe. Suppose the bearded lady loved Hendricks and he loved Lillian. Well, then why would Hendricks kill Lillian? I didn't say he did. You said that. I say amazing things every now and then, don't I? Well, at least amusing. Now, listen. Suppose Mabel killed Lillian to get her out of the way. Of course. Then she killed Hendricks because even with Lillian dead, he would have nothing to do with her. You follow me like a little puppy, don't you? Woof, woof. <laughs> nice puppy. Sit up and listen to this. I think we're getting somewhere. Hendricks probably had a pretty good idea. Mabel killed Lillian. That marked him corpse number two with two counts. Sure. One, because he didn't love Mabel. And two, because he suspected her of murder. Those motives for murder are so old, they have whiskers. And come to think of it, so does the bearded lady. Come in, come in. Inspector Faraday, here's the coroner's report on Hendricks and the sword swallower. Oh, thanks, Reynolds. What are you grinning at, Inspector? Yeah. I tossed Blackie and Miss Wesley off the carnival grounds. I gave them orders to stay off them for good. This is one case I'm going to solve without interference from those two. Yeah? I don't like the way you said that. Well, I just said yeah, Inspector. Yeah? Why, well, uh, yeah. That's the way you better say it from now on. Uh, what's the coroner's report have to say? Both Hendricks and the sword swallower died the same way. Mm. So I see. From single sword wounds, huh? Mm-hmm. That sort of proves something, doesn't it? Uh, it proves plenty. It proves the same person killed them, and for the same reason. Now we're getting somewhere. Got your hat and coat on. You getting somewhere, too? Yeah, and you're getting with me. Out to the carnival again. Where you and I are going to put on a little circus of our own. Your move, Blackie. Or is checkers boring you? Oh, 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 excuse me, Mary. I, I think I'll try this. Let's see. I'll put my king 
right here. Darling, don't be upset because Inspector Faraday made us leave the carnival. It's comfy here in your apartment. I'm not upset about it. As soon as I get an idea, I'm going to sneak back in. Your move. You mean we're going to sneak back in? Since you have such a singular interest in this case, I'll make the pronoun plural. We'll sneak in. Good. Go ahead, move. When Faraday called to say he was coming up here, did he say what he wanted? Uh-uh. Oh, that's a good move. But it's your last one. Watch. Sometimes I hate you. <laughs> we athletes always do better on the home grounds. Oh. Want to play another game? No, thanks. Well, I've murdered you at Checkers. Suppose we get back to the problem of who's been murdering people at the carnival. Well, your theory is right, darling. It's the bearded lady. I could only get Faraday to gris disagree with it. I'd know it was right. That's probably my perennial suspect of the inspector. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Blackie. Well, Faraday, I was just about to phone the police to have them look for you. I was worried. Yeah, I bet. What were you worried about? Oh, if you didn't show up, then he couldn't tell you how we've worked out the solution of the carnival killing. I helped. You helped, uh, Miss Wesley. Uh, this should be great. It's very simple, Faraday. This is what happened. Yeah. The bearded lady was in love with Bob Hendricks. Mm -hmm. Hendricks loved the sword swallower. So the bearded lady got rid of the sword swallower. But Bob Hendricks still didn't fall for her. So the bearded lady killed him, too. Simple, Faraday? Uh, you certainly are. It just so happens that I came to tell you that the bearded lady isn't a lady, but a man. A <gasps> um, man? Uh, there's the phone. I'll get it. So what do you think of your theory now, huh? Well, how do you know the bearded lady is a man? Jackson, the guy who owns the carnival, told me so. Well, I suppose he's right then, but why didn't he tell me? Hey, Secretary, for you. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, look, look, from now on, don't you two give me any more phony theories. Blackie, is the bearded lady really a man? I guess so. That's what Jackson told Faraday. Well, then I guess that's the end of our theory. Good guess. But nothing says we can't guess again. Who will we guess this time? Well, um, Mr. Jackson, maybe. Why? Well, I don't know. Let's guess reasons. Oh, fine. Well, let's take Mr. Jackson as a suspect. Now, if... Say, we can at that. If he waited until now to mention that Mabel is really a man, maybe it's just to throw suspicion on of Mabel. Of course it is, and you know what I just uh, thought of? you sit here and dream up phony theories just for your own amusement, will you? I'm going to get back to the carnival. Okay. Only we have a suspect for you. Jackson, the carnival owner. Oh, yeah? Well, Jackson has just been slugged. And maybe we're going to have corpse number three because they say he's going to die. And now back to Boston Blackie. Blackie and Mary go to a carnival for fun and become involved in a murder case that so far has meant the death of two people and assault on a third. The dead are Lillian, the sword swallower, Bob Hendricks, her lover, and Jackson, the carnival owner, is supposedly near death from a blow in the head. As we return to our story, Faraday is at the carnival talking to Jackson, who has just regained consciousness. Now, look, Jackson, try to tell me who slugged you. I don't know, Inspector Gage. But who'd want to slug you? I don't know that either. Did you get a glimpse of whoever hit you? Or, or anything we can use for a clue? I, I didn't see anything. Look, Jackson, when you told me the bearded lady was a man, do you think he was anywhere around? I they don't know. Yeah. Well, apparently you're coming around all right. That's something. Right, Inspector. And here's someone, me. Blackie, I told you to stay off the carnival grounds. I bought an admission ticket by design, Inspector, and found myself here by instinct. Well, go find yourself somewhere else in a hurry. Look, Faraday, I've been doing some things. Ah, uh, stop right there. You thought Mabel was in love with Bob Hendricks, and Mabel turns out to be a man. Sure, so I just twist my theory to fit the new setup. Hendricks killed Lillian, the sword swallower, because Lillian knew the bearded lady was a man and loved him. Yeah, and then? And then the bearded lady killed Hendricks for killing the sword swallower. Then who slugged Jackson here? The bearded lady, for telling you he was a man. Do I have something? You sure do, Blackie. Orders to get off the carnival grounds and stay off. Or the next orders I give will be for your arrest. <laughs> Is the bearded lady's tent? Yeah. Who are you? I'm the doctor in the sideshow. Who are you? Inspector Faraday of the police. Now, where's the bearded lady? She'll be here in a couple of minutes. Uh, here she comes, Inspector. Yeah, good. Hello, Mabel. How are you? This is a police officer to see. Uh, I guess you'll want to be alone, huh? See you around, officer. Uh, you may at that. Hey, you, bearded lady. Come here. 
Sit down. Oh, you can't talk, huh? But you can hear, can't you? Good. So they call you Mabel, huh? But you're a man, aren't you? Oh, just nod your head for... Well, I'm glad to see somebody admit something around here. Now, who killed the sword swallower? You don't know, huh? Who killed Hendricks? You don't know that either. Well, who slugged Jack? Oh, you don't know. That's fine. That's great. Doesn't anybody around here know anything? I guess not. But I can't complain. I don't know anything around here either. At last you admit it, Saturday. Frankie, what do I have to do to keep you out of here? Arrest the man at the gate for selling me tickets. I said I'd have you arrested. You know, you wouldn't do that to a pal, would you, Pat? No, not to a pal. As I came in, I heard you say you didn't know anything. And how right you are for change. I'll say I don't know anything. I don't know who killed the sword swallower. I don't know who slugged Bob Hendricks. I don't know who slugged Jackson. I don't know who's doing what, to whom, and why. And I don't know why I bother talking to you. Frank, the only thing I do know is that, that Jackson, the owner of the carnival, is the owner of this carnival. Give yourself a big fat zero, Faraday. I just checked. Jackson doesn't own this carnival. <laughs> Exciting, thrilling, great, easy game of bingo. Think fast and you can make money fast. The number is five. Bingo! Well, Blackie, we're lost again. Say, if Jackson doesn't own the carnival, who does? And how many more times should we try this game before we give up? Another ten, Mary, and then I guess we'll call it quits. And about the carnival ownership, well... Yeah, I'll your tell cards, you. please, as we check the numbers. Couldn't we hide from Inspector Faraday somewhere where it doesn't cost us so much money? Diagonally, 78, 82, 3, 5. The card is correct. There's a winner. Will the lucky gentleman come up and collect his fortune? Blackie, that's the same man who won a couple of games, though. Yes, I know, Mary. He sat in another part of the room this time, too. You know, I've noticed that only two or three people have won anything at all. This game's crooked, Mary. Every winner in this place is a stooge. Well, in that case, shall we keep on playing? Quoth the blackie, nevermore. You know, all those other wheels of chance we tried were gimmick, too. Did you notice the wheel always stopped on a number never covered? Oh, darling, once in a while, somebody. If you want to win on the wheels in this carnival, you had to show your card in the Stooges Union. Come on, let's go out of here. But if Inspector Faraday sees you, you know... It's getting late, Mary. Lights are going off. Most of the concessions are closing. I think Faraday's probably gone. Well, all right, but let's go this way. It's near the parking lot. Okay. That was the last game tonight, folks. Come again when you have more time Ooh. to spend and more money to defend. It's awfully dark out here. Hmm. Well, before it gets any darker, you go get in the car and I'll meet you at the gate. I want to see Jackson a minute. Well, uh, don't make it more than a minute, will you? Because I'll worry about you. That's a reason to talk to Jackson for an hour. Oh. <laughs> I was only fooling, Mary. See you in just a minute. Jackson's office must be over this way. Hey, what are you... <laughs> Mary, I suppose if I say, where am I, you'll hit me on the head again, won't you? Oh, oh darling. You're in your apartment. How did your head feel? No. Oh, all right, now... A little dizzy, though. I gave you sleeping pills after we got back here. Who hit you? I know something better than that. I know who killed Lillian, the sword swallower, and Bob Hendricks. You do? Who? The same person who slugged Jackson. Well, tell me. Oh, of all the times in the world for the telephone to ring. If that's Rawlins calling for Faraday, I'm Faraday. Oh, Blackie, no. Oh, Mary, yes. I put in the call to Rawlins. When did you do that? Well, you were getting the bandage at the drugstore. All right. Hello. Hello, Miss Wesley. Yes? Inspector Faraday there? Uh, yes, just a minute. See you, Blackie. Thanks. Hello, Hello. Rollins. Yes, Inspector. Uh, did you get that information for me? Yes, sir, I did. He's in a certain morning. Skip with ten more years to go. Cops have been looking for him for two years. Is that all you wanted to know? Thanks, Rollins. That's not only all I want to know, that's all I need to know. <laughs> Blackie, look, Blackie, put the rifle down, will you? Haven't we played around this shooting gallery long enough without getting anywhere? 
We certainly have. Faraday? That's why I asked you to come down here this afternoon. Well, stop firing that gun, will you? You haven't hit anybody yet. Well, I'm just about to hit something. A nail on the head. Here comes the bearded lady pushing Jackson in the wheelchair. Jackson sure recovered awfully quick from what was supposed to be a fatal blow. Oh, hello there. You sent for us, Inspector? You no, know, I did, Jackson. How are you feeling? I am. Wish you wouldn't fire that gun. Noise jars my head. Okay. Hello, Mabel. How are you? Fine, huh? Too bad you can't talk. Or can you? I told you he was a mute. Yes, I know. But if he could talk, what a lot he could say. <coughs> hey, what are you trying to do? Break his that gun? All I tried to do was break his silence, Faraday, and I did. You talk, don't you, Mabel? All right, all right, I talk. My name ain't Mabel, so what? So your name is Joe Evers, and you're wanted in Kansas to finish serving a 25-year sentence. Oh, I am, am I? Yes, you are, are you? Last night, after you slugged me, I came to, went into your tent, found a glass with your fingerprints on it, and had Rawlins check them for me. You're Joe Evers, all right. Oh, then you're the guy I'm looking for. Evers, you're under arrest for murder. No, I'm not. Grab like he's making a rent for... Oh, no, he's not. Because I owe him a poke in the face the last night. <laughs> nice going, Blackie. Yeah, it was a pleasure. That smack he gave me last night was a beaut. Hey, he's going to out. I think he's going to come to for half an hour, Faraday. Well, gentlemen, I guess this just about solves the mystery of who killed Lillian and Hendricks and who slugged me. Uh, it certainly does, Jackson. Well, I always get my man. And always the wrong one, Faraday. Jackson here is your murderer. Uh, me? Yes, Jackson, you. You're hired by a syndicate to run this carnival. Your chief source of revenge, or rather revenue, is bingo and the crooked gambling wheels and the midway booths. I know, I tried them all. What's more, Lillian, the sword swallower, found out the wheels were crooked and threatened to go to the police. Well, what if she did? I wouldn't kill her for that. You would if the syndicate ordered you to, and the syndicate said it was either her life or yours. Well, then why did he kill Hendricks? Hendricks was in love with Lillian. She had told him about the crooked games. When he found Lillian dead, he knew who'd killed her. Jackson had to get him out of the way, too. Oh, what's the matter with you, Blackie? Jackson here was an intended victim himself. Intended is right. He intended us to think so, Faraday, by hitting himself on the head. Everything Jackson's done and said points to the fact that he was trying to divert suspicion from himself and place it on Joe Evers, posing as a big lady. You're right, Blackie. Jackson, I'm holding you on suspicion of murder. Oh, no, you're not, Blackie. I'll take that gun you're holding. Yeah. Now, both of you stand right where you are. Blackie, maybe you couldn't hit a target with this gun, but I can. You and the inspector make excellent ones if you try to stop me. Let him go, Blackie. We can get him later. I can handle him, Faraday, now. Take one more step and I'll shoot. Go ahead, shoot. <laughs> Blackie, Blackie, you all right? So far, maybe he needs more than one bullet to stop him. Blackie, Blackie. I'm all right, Faraday. As soon as I get this gun. Oh, you, you get it. You, I've got something to help me. This. Blackie, Blackie, you better get to a doctor quick. So help me? I honestly think you're worried about me, Faraday. But Blackie, you, you've been shot three times. Remember how you kidded me for missing the targets in the shooting gallery there? Oh, never mind about that now. Come on, let's get you to a doctor. Look, Faraday. I missed those targets because I'd loaded this rifle with blanks. That's what it was loaded with when Jackson was firing at me. I know that I'd never get him to confess, but I thought if I faced him with the evidence, he'd make a break for it and grab a gun to do it. So you made sure he'd grab a gun loaded with blanks. Now, you double-crosser, you, you had me thinking you were a brave guy. Uh, I'd be brave, too, against a gun full of blanks. Quit complaining, Faraday. You've solved another murder. When I forced Jackson to make a break, believe me, he gave you one at the same time. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.